the guardians are the objective in the game. You're trying to kill the enemy team's guardian, they're trying to kill yours. Um, as you level up, you make uh, upgrade choices about your character, and they're all uh, branching upgrades. Uh, it didn't used to be the case that they were branching. You know, uh, it w there was some other system where, sort of, from a designer standpoint, I viewed it as opportunity cost between one upgrade and another, and we found that didn't provide the level of satisfaction for players, and so we switched to this branching system. And then uh, over you know the last year, we've gotten more and more aggressive with what it means to have branching upgrades. So it's like I've I've taken the skill and I've changed fundamentally how it works. An um, example I like to give is uh, one of the characters, I don't think he was in the game that you played, uh, HK206. He's this robot that has all the guns. Um, and uh, one of the one of the weapons he starts out with is a rail gun. It's sort of his secondary attack and it's his best like long range burst damage thing. But um, depending on your team composition, depending on how you like to play, depending on what enemies you're facing, you may want to upgrade that to be a more powerful railgun that you can uh, like hold the button down to charge up to give you an extra powerful shot. Or the other branch actually turns it into this short range cannon that does the splash thing and actually has more disruptive abilities. You can second tier branched upgrade on that, then creates this uh, smoke cloud that sort of chokes enemies and stops them from using skills for a couple of seconds. So you've given up a lot of your offensive potential to be this sort of support character or just to help yourself stay alive when enemy like melee guys come in on you. And you know, that's a mindset that you know we'd sort of dipped our toe into and as soon as we got stuff in there, you know, we got more and more um, feedback from players about, you know, being bolder with the system we had. And that's, you know, one small example out of many. So as far as uh, maps go, yeah, kind of what we're currently looking at, what we're currently hoping to yeah. finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've got uh, three that are uh, fairly far along. Uh, in alpha, really, the players have seen two of those maps, and then we've got a uh, sort of smaller group uh, called core, and then a smaller subset in there, competitive core, which is sort of like really high skill players, competitive uh, teams from other games that we brought in Alpha to, to give us uh, feedback on sort of high-end balance. And so we've been working with them on the, on the third map for a little while now. We've um, actually over the you know, uh, development of the game prototyped about uh, a little more than a dozen different maps, uh, most of which are trash and are, aren't going <laughs> to see, ever see the light of day, but a number of which are sort of in the queue for when we get to the next one. Uh, so when we go into uh, closed beta, it's actually just going to be the one, but then over the course of the next few months we expect to roll the other two out. Are we likely to see any kind of different types of Objectives. Obviously, you've got the fundamental yeah, yeah, guardians. Yeah. Any kind of uh, you know what we uh, we look at is how each map can uh, change up gameplay uh, without changing the fundamental rules of the game. And we found because of the action-oriented nature of the game, because of the the use of physics, you know, and arcing projectiles and gravity and ricocheting things and verticality and that, you know, you've got characters with super jump kind of stuff. And you know, you're using Uncle Sven and you put down the elastic ooze and you jump up away from people. Um, uh, and like even just arrangement and number of summoning circles for the creatures that you summon, that we're able to get um, a lot of variability in how the game plays without a lot of fundamental rule changes. There are still some things we're looking at to, to push deeper strategy in the game without complicating things, um, but we're not expecting to do you know like different game modes. Really, you know, what I've set out to do is create the best competitive experience that I can, and you know, it's, it's a lot of pieces that all work uh, together pretty uh, pretty tightly, so just this one mode, yeah. So the game is obviously going to be free to play? Yes. What kind of monetization are you looking at? Uh, yeah, so we haven't announced a whole lot of details there, but uh, what I can tell you is we will be selling skins. I think uh, we're going to be showing off some of them fairly soon. Um, Obviously, we're committed to the game not being pay to win, um, and you know we want as many people as possible to be able to get in, have fun, be able to make progress whether they're they're uh, paying or not. But then also, you know, give give people reasons to give us money for sure, and skins will be a big part of that. So you think of maybe a free hero rotation type mechanic thing? Well, we'll, we'll see. This is all yeah. to be Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, and so, uh, is there any way that anybody can kind of get into the closed bases, or is it just sign up? Yeah, yeah, just uh, sign up, gogigantic.com uh, site, and, and um, it's, uh, like I said, Windows 10 and Xbox One, and so if you have either of those, um, go ahead and, or both, <laughs> go ahead and sign up and check it out. Uh, so it's going to start out on uh, 28th of August, and uh, sign-ups are, are open now, I think. Thank you very much cool. for answering that question. Thank you.